OK, volunteers, if you're going to volunteers... In the 40th anniversary year of the Falklands conflict, over 130 veterans have made the long journey to the South Atlantic. Today, the Falkland Islanders themselves are taking the veterans back to the places they fought in the campaign to liberate them. Right. This way then, everybody, to the rover. Sally Heathman has been paired up with former commando Rob Stenhouse, here with his wife Karen. Sally wasn't even born in 82, but had the British task force not set sail, her life would have been very different. So what were you in then in 82? I was in 40 Commando. Oh, wow. Rob was only 17 when he last set foot on the island, one of the youngest to deploy. Okay. His mum didn't even know he'd come to war. Because he was just a junior Marine, yeah. she thought they'd been kept back on Ascension Island. She only found out when he returned. Right, well, welcome again, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> We're headed for Campito Hill, where Rob will be able to look right across to the bay where he landed in the darkness of the night on the 21st of May, 1982. The journey's around three hours from Stanley, but Rob and Sally have plenty to talk about. I don't know whether people particularly appreciate now how tenuous winning the war was. Yeah. So there was a very, very real feeling that we can lose this really easily. Yeah. And to be honest, all the Argentinians needed to have done was maybe sink a few more of the critical uh, ships that were carrying critical stuff. We would have been in serious trouble. Goose Green and Two Para, they were literally down for the last couple of bullets yeah. at the time the Argentinians well, surrendered. So, Because that's funny enough, the stories we've always heard was that if the Argentines had managed to hold out for, say, another week or so, another two weeks, then it would have been a totally different yeah. story. Rob, along with some of the other 130 veterans, spent yesterday with schoolchildren on the island. History of the conflict is taught from a young age here in the Falklands, something Sally remembers well. You just know those are the people, they're the reason that you're here. Yeah, it's yeah. just incredible to be part of it, incredible. A worthless death is a crime. It is, no it yeah. is. And I hope that by you coming back here you've seen that it was worth it. Yeah, I yeah. I really hope you have. Yeah, absolutely. I, I um, and it's it's just reaffirmed it. I always thought it was a just war, the one that we fought. Mm. Seeing the appreciation and the continued appreciation is just like, like sounding. Rob's unit were based around the beachhead where they landed. They were tasked with doing search and destroy missions, looking for the Argentinian special forces. So we came in along the sound down here uh, on the landing craft, so it was pitch black. So we got the, um, we could hear the, the, the gunfire from the naval ships onto Fanning Head as the bows dropped down. Out we ran and then faced with a, a, a kind of three foot bank. It doesn't sound very high, but the amount of kit that we used to have to carry, um, on the, it weighed, I don't know, about 70 odd kilograms. We couldn't stand up on our own. I we weighed about nine stone at the time and it felt like it was going to absolutely snap my shoulder blades. We got our boots wet. Ideally, you can get that off these landing crafts and you don't walk through water, but uh, my boots got wet and they never, never dry. I had three pairs of socks. One pair of socks I kept in the plastic bag and I didn't open that till the end of the war. I kept a wet pair of socks underneath my armpits and the dryish pair on my feet. And every day, the great joy was to take off my socks, put on some talcum powder, put on the damp socks, and then put the other ones underneath my armpits. Even the sleeping bags weren't particularly good in them days. Mine was, I was six foot, and I think my sleeping bag was for someone who's about four foot five. My knees were freezing all the time. We had to, we had to sleep fully clothed because we thought we might get attacked. So I had the SLR, uh, with a magazine on, loaded and ready to go. That was inside the sleeping bag. I was in the sleeping bag. I got two hours sleep and then on watch for two hours and then two hours sleep again. And then we were up ready for first light. So the whole time I was really tired. I was hungry all the time and I was freezing. So do you love it here then? Love it, absolutely love it. I'd never live, I don't think I could live anywhere else in yeah. the world. I really don't think I could. This is absolutely home. Yeah. It's, it gets in your bones. Did you ever go up these mountains at all? 
So the school makes you run up Mount Tumbledown. Yeah. Um, but yes, because when we were children, like we'd go out with my cousins and it'd be like, you know, come on kids, we're going to jump in the rover, go up a mountain. And then when you got up to the top of the mountain, they've got the little army box, which has got all the um, varnish and stuff. So you, okay, could, yeah. you made sure you cleaned the cross before you went yeah. back down. So it all looked very nice. Just like the Falklands children, few veterans forget their polish when visiting these sites of battle. The convoy stops at the place Lieutenant Richard Nunn was killed and Rob makes sure his plaque is looking its best. It's kind of brought it back real again. It was, it was such a surreal time uh, for a 17 year old. Uh, it was almost like, at times it was almost like a film set, almost like, am I really living this? It was still quite nerve wracking because you never knew where they were going to drop the bombs. So we were all the target really. I can't believe you were only yeah. 17. Yeah, I'd done the commando training and, and they said in the commando training, you're doing a man's job, we'll treat you like a man, uh, you can drink if you want. And so you felt like, 17 years old, right, I, I, I'm a man. We head next to Ajax Bay, the site of the old field hospital, affectionately known as the Red and Green Life Machine on account of its incredible track record. Every soldier who entered alive came out alive. Under the rules of the Geneva Convention, hospitals painted with a red cross are not legitimate targets of war. But the Red and Green Life Machine was positioned right next to the Task Force Ammunition Store and so was not allowed the protective emblem. The Argentinians didn't hold back. Skyhawks dropped four bombs over Ajax Bay. Only one exploded, but still five men lost their lives. No one comes here anymore. It's a restricted area, probably to the relief of the penguins, but special permission has been granted for the veterans to return. I'm trying to work out the colour of the flag. It's logistics. Yeah. I was dropped off into the mountains. I never came down to see this. Um, some of the troop came down to try and get some uh, fresh rations and um, when one of the guys came down from the troop, this place got hit and there was a huge explosion and we thought we'd lost him. It took uh, quite a few kind of hours before they turned up and um, uninjured, which was good. I'm glad I was part of it and I'm glad I, uh, uh, I did it. Uh, I was particularly glad that I survived it. I've got to say, and although that's kind of personal and maybe a little bit, you know, um, selfish, I'm afraid, as far as I can see, war is a selfish thing. You know, you literally think when bombs are landing down, you think, I'd rather you have it than I have it. Not that you want anyone, any colleagues to be killed, but what you particularly don't want is for you to be killed. Now, I'm not particularly religious, but as you say, the soldier's prayer is, I know I've never prayed to you, but if there's anything up there, get me through this alive, is what we all pray for. And I prayed. The attitude of the Falklanders and their appreciation has really brought it home to me that the sacrifices were, were worth it. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't an unjust war. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.